Hey everyone, this is Andrew at Plainview Farm, and today I'm going to give you a few reasons why you should have an electric fence set up as part of your pastured pork operation. I'm also going to show you how I train pigs to an electric fence. So hang around and I'll show you how that goes. So if you've ever raised pigs on pasture or are considering raising pigs on pasture, whether it would be for your own consumption to, in order to fill your own freezer or for the purposes of building a farm business, one of the most valuable tools that you can have is an electric fence setup. And here are a few reasons why. Reason number one that it's a good idea to have an electric fence set up as part of your pastured pork operation is that it allows you to be much more efficient whenever it comes to pasture management. If you don't want your pigs to totally destroy the ground, then they have to stay on the move. Some disturbance is good, but making your property look like the surface of the moon really isn't that great. Unless that's what you're going for, and I'm imagining that most people probably don't want their pasture to end up being craters and rocks and dust with nothing growing on them. Okay, that's, that's not profitable. Keeping the pigs moving through the pastures, that allows them to make the most of what forage is available without destroying it. We want it to grow back, we want it to be productive, so they have to keep moving. Reason number two that it's a good idea to have an electric fence set up as part of your pastured pork operation is that it's cheap. Hog panels are great, Woven wire is also great whenever it comes to keeping pigs in, but whenever you're thinking about pastured pork and keeping pigs moving through the pasture, hog panels and woven wire start getting really expensive. For smaller pigs, whenever it comes to electric fence, you only need probably two strands to keep them contained. For larger pigs, like a sow or a breed boar, you're looking at a single strand of wire to keep those pigs from escaping. In the pasture, what I use is fiberglass rods and tread-in posts in order to hold the wire up. And those are about two or three dollars a piece. A roll of poly wire, uh, which is about 1,350 feet of poly wire, is somewhere between 40 to 60 dollars, depending on the quality, the brand that you purchase. And a reel for that poly wire is a, another 40 to 60 dollars, somewhere in there. The third reason that it's a good idea to have an electric fence set up as part of your pastured pork operation is that electric fencing is mobile. Like I said before, wire panels and woven wire are expensive, but they're also meant to be fixed infrastructure. I'm not sure about you all, but I hate moving panels around. It can be done, and a lot of people do move panels around, but I'll tell you, I'm not one of them, and I have no desire to become one of them in the future. Woven wire, on the other hand, is meant to be a permanent fence. If you're thinking of using woven wire as a mobile fence, you might want to think about, uh, well, what's the nice way of putting this? You might want to think about getting your head examined. Seriously. So those are a few of the big reasons why I think that using electric fencing in your pastured pork operation is a necessity. However, pigs have to be trained to electric fencing. Their natural inclination is to run through the electric fence whenever they get shocked. So that's obviously not the desired out outcome. What you have to do is train the pigs to back up. I'm not sure how things work at your place, but if a pig runs through a fence here, they're probably not where I want them to be. So as I said, in order to reprogram the pigs, there has to be some sort of physical barrier behind the electric wire when you're training them. In my case, as I mentioned before, I do use wire panels. I, I don't want to have to put them up and take them down very often, but I do use them in order to train my pigs to the electric fence. You can get these panels at just about any farm store. The panels that I use are 34 inches tall and 16 feet long. In my neck of the woods, panels like that are selling for about $32 right now. And what I do is I use four of those panels to make a 16 foot by 16 foot training pin. I support the panels with steel T-posts spaced just over five feet apart. I use a total of 12 posts in order to build my pen. There are two posts in the middle of each panel and one at each corner. Some of you might think this is overkill, but a pig is a little ball of muscle. If they manage to get under a loose panel, chances are they're probably going to pull the posts and the panel free and escape. Trust me, I have made that mistake. Chasing pigs 
that you don't have to chase is not something that you want to do, especially if you're in your late 30s and a little bit out of shape. Which brings me to the next piece of advice. Never believe someone when they tell you that their pig or their pigs that you're buying from them are trained to electric fence. It's not that you shouldn't trust people, okay? It's that you should verify that what they're telling you is the truth by putting the pigs on your farm in your training pen to make sure that they actually do know what to do whenever they encounter a wire that's going to shock them. Once again, I'm speaking from experience here. There is nothing like meeting your new neighbors by chasing a 40 pound feeder pig through their front yard. Fortunately though, I have good neighbors, so it all worked out. But not everybody does have neighbors that are going to be so understanding. So as I was saying, I use four hog panels and 12 T-posts. I attach the panels to the posts with T-post clips. I use three, one at the top, one T-post clip just a couple inches from the ground, and one T-post clip about 14 inches or so from the ground. I wired the panels together where I attached them to the posts in the corners. The T-posts are on the outside of the panel on the sides so that any pressure that the pigs put against the panels will be against the posts. The posts are on the inside of the panels at the corners so that they can be wired together really good and tight and in order to protect the pigs from trying to, well, jam their noses between the panels. So once I have all of that work done and I've caught my breath, I put five inch offset insulators on the post about nose high to the pigs. One of the reasons is that a pig does not like to go over things, it likes to go under them. So you wanna make sure that nose high is the maximum height that you put these because the pig, if they decide to go underneath the wire or try to go underneath the wire, that electric shock will still get them hopefully on the top of their head or the back of their neck or maybe one of their ears if you have a pig that's got the kind of ears that stick up off the top of their head. Next, I tie some cheap round corner insulators in the corners. Then I run the poly wire through all of the insulators and tie it off to a cheap inline straightener that I can tighten by hand. You don't want to over tighten it. In this instance, firm is good. Then I put the water barrel, the feed trough, and the junk pile pig shelter that I built in the pen with them. And be sure to check out the video that I made where I build that cheap pig shelter. I built it for practically free. So you may want to check that out. So once the fence is juiced up, the only thing that's left to do is to introduce the pigs to the training pen. Like I mentioned before, they naturally want to run through the wire when they get their first shot. So in this kind of pen, they have no choice but to back up. That's why it's important for them to all get shocked probably multiple times because old habits can be hard to break. That being said, pigs are very smart animals and they have very good memories. So after they've been in this pen for a couple weeks, I should be able to open up the corner of the pen and not worry about them trying to escape. In fact, most pigs will not cross over an area that had an electric wire because they remember that an electric wire was there and just because they can't see it doesn't mean it's not gonna get them. So it's important to make sure that you have a space for them to get out of the pen uh, whenever you set up your pastures. And I may do another video about that in the future. Maybe we'll call it how to move pigs through pasture or something like that. Anyway, if you found this video to be useful, I would encourage you to please hit the like button. Also, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel and be sure and hit that notification bell to make sure that anytime we post a new video, you'll be sure to know about it. Once again, this is Andrew at Plainview Farm. Thanks for watching.